The Revenue Review Town Hall was held at 7 o'clock p.m. September 4, 2018 at the Buchanan Public Safety Complex. The Revenue Committee comprised of Finance Director Amberly Jenkins, Mayor David McCauley, Councilor C.J. Rylands, Councilor Dave Thomas, and Administrative Assistant Barb Hinkle presented information on a general fund operating budget, department responsibilities and needs, and proposed funding measures. During the live event, Amberly Jenkins presented the majority of the information here, with additional comments from the mayor and department supervisors. For this online version, the comments have been recorded by the information coordinator, Callie Cronin Sams. The hope is that those who could not attend the town hall can learn about the Revenue Review Committee findings that were presented at that time. To be clear, though, this is not a recording of the live event, but this is the same material that was presented at that time. The presentation began with introductions of the committee and department supervisors, including the Director of Public Works, Jerry Arnold, with 25 years of service, the Chief of Police, Matt Gregory, 21 years of service, Fire Chief, J.B. Kimball, 17 years of service, Street Commissioner, Brad Hawkins, who could not be here at the presentation, but with nine years of service, Stockard Youth Center Director Deborah Brockelman, 14 years of service, Erasmo Rizzo, Sewer Department Superintendent, 2 years of service, or Housing Enforcement Officer Vincent Smith, 3 years of service, Office Assistant Barb Hinkle, 16 years of service, City Engineer Jay Holland, 6 years of service, Grant Writer and Information Coordinator Callie Cronin Sams, new in 2018, City Attorney Tom O'Neill, Director of Finance and Administration and Assistant Recorder Amby Jenkins with 42 years of experience, Mayor David McCauley, and our City Council members Mary Albaugh, Pam Capari, Robbie Skinner, David Thomas, and CJ Rylands, City Recorder Colin Rigger. We have over 150 years of experience in our supervising and key personnel staff. This doesn't count the several longtime employees with skills and experience that we are also very proud of. In addition, attending members of the public were asked to sign in and indicate whether they would like to speak at the end of the presentation. Amberly Jenkins. Again, we are here to talk about revenues and expenses and the city general fund. And I want to reassure everyone here that we have a balanced budget. We are paying our bills and making payroll. We currently have 510,000 in the rainy day fund. This is a fund that is permitted by the state auditor's office that allow municipalities to set aside up to 30% of the current budget into a reserve. That being said, we should continue to add to this fund with a goal to reach the maximum allowable, which currently would be $1.2 million. This ensures a cushion for unexpected expenses and stabilization for the future. The reason we are looking at revenues and expenses is because Council has observed that the last five years of revenues and expenses are pretty much equal. This is one reason that City Council wanted to be proactive and review the revenues and expenses and appointed a committee to do that. Instead of waiting until something would have to be done, they wanted to prepare for what could happen in the future. This next pie chart shows the overall expenses distributions. This is to me a reflection of the community's operations. The two largest areas of our budget are the Public Safety, Police and Fire Departments at 45% and Streets Department at 32%. In five years, the Public Safety budget has increased about 500,000 and Streets about 100,000. Through attrition, we have saved some on payroll expenses by not replacing a few positions that were vacated. About 45% of our budget is labor. We have to remain as competitive with salaries as possible in order to retain experienced and skilled staff health insurance costs have also increased each year. In revenues this past fiscal year, we received about 880,000 in property taxes, about 20% of the budget, and 1.3 million in B&O taxes, about 30% of the budget. 
General fund is separate from the utility funds of water, sewer, and garbage. The utility funds cannot contribute to the general fund operations. In some cases, we can divide the wages of personnel if their jobs overlap, such as directors, some office staff, and attorneys. In other words, a separate person is not needed for each of these jobs. We also have we also do not have separate offices to collect city fees and utility bills. This is cost effective for the customers. The utility funds are in good financial condition at this time. I feel I need to briefly go over how the budget process works for a better understanding on how we come up with the expenses for the upcoming year. State code mandates how this works. Our budgets run from July 1st to June 30th each year. In January, we begin gathering the information from each department. Supervisors have quite a bit of input in the needs for each department. We start analyzing the requests and prepare to send it to City Council. Public meetings are scheduled with City Council. Often the supervisor of those departments will present details about the requests. Council reviews the information presented and listens to supervisors and any outside entity requests, as well as public comment. The budget needs to include the general operating costs of each of those departments, such as utilities, insurance, payroll costs and benefits, fuel and equipment payments, and property payments. The street police, fire, and stalker in total have 24 vehicles and around 20 pieces of equipment in the fleet. We've started a program to cycle out vehicles so our departments will have reliable vehicles to operate. And with the new police officer hires are required to share a cruiser. We have also started to phase GPS tracking units in all the new vehicles. The state requires that an approved budget for the upcoming year is submitted to them by the end of March, even though this budget will not take effect until July 1st. <laughs>